Good morning, guys. It is uh, Wednesday, and I just wanted to reach out and share a little bit of experience, strength, and hope uh, with you this morning. Uh, definitely want to say uh, I had a great time at the meeting last night. Uh, those meetings like that are just so, just so beneficial uh, for me. Uh, they again, I've said it a thousand times. You guys, <laughs> what well, keeps me sober? So uh, for that, I wanted to say thank you, uh, and and I hope you guys got just as much out of the meeting as what uh, what I did. So. Um, with that being said, I want to uh, I want to talk a little bit today about a couple things, really. Uh, well, about one thing. Uh, a few weeks back, I gave my lead, and I started out the lead with a question, uh, with a couple questions. But um, I, I want to pose that question here to you today. Uh, let's say you're sitting at home watching a football game or a baseball game, hopefully a baseball game, uh, on your big 55-inch flat screen TV on the wall, right? And I come knocking on your door. And you open up your door and I rush in and I say, hey, my name is Drew and I'm taking your flat screen TV and I rip it off the wall and shoot out the door. What would you do? What would you do? Chances are you'd be really pissed off, which rightfully so. Um, you would be my ass. You hell might even shoot me. That's fair. I'd probably do the same thing, you know, even though I identified myself. Um, so let's take it a step further. What would you do if uh, you were sitting home at night, you and the family, and I came up, knocked on the door, and you opened up the door, and I said, hey, my name is Drew, and I'm here to kidnap your family. You would probably shoot me again, and that's justified. I get that. Um, by the way, I'm never going to do this, so just for the record. So let me change it just a slight bit. What happens if I just kick in your door, bum rush in, don't even announce myself and just say, hey, I'm here to take your family. What would you do? You'd fight like the devil to keep them, right? You'd fight like hell to keep them. Because your family, your TV, uh, the, the things that are important to you are important to you. And whatever is important to you, you're going to fight like hell to keep them, to protect them, right? Sounds pretty logical, rational. Why don't we do that for our sobriety? Why don't we do that for the very gift that God's given us? Um, several months ago, back last year, actually, um, I talked about this. Whatever we put on a pedestal is, is what we are more apt to protect. Um, for me, uh, I've done this uh, several folks that I've sponsored. They, they, they've heard me do this. I've done this with them. I've been in the car and I've called my kids, one of my kids. Uh, and I said, hey. What's the most single most important thing in my life? And they will, without hesitation, tell you, your sobriety, Dad. My kids will tell me that. My, my wife will tell you that. Uh, in that room I, 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 a few weeks back when I was giving my lead, my wife was in there and I said it in front of the whole room. My sobriety is the single most important thing in my life. So let's go back a step. Let's take a step back. See, before I came into the rooms this final time of AA, I put my booze, I put my addiction on a pedestal. And once I got it on that pedestal, buddy, I fought like hell to protect it. I would hide bottles around the property or under the house or in the back of the toilet or wherever because I didn't want nobody finding my booze and pouring it out. Hell, I didn't want nobody finding my booze and drinking it. So I fought like hell to protect it. Uh, I would be at... Um, doing things with, with other people, and I w I'm trying to come up with excuses to cut that activity short so I can get home and start drinking because I wanted to protect my addiction because my addiction was front and center on this pedestal. I put it on this pedestal day in, day out, right? So when I got sober, I realized, I realized that my priorities were way out of whack, way out of whack. AA taught me that the single most important thing in my life has to be my sobriety. It's got to come before my kids, before my wife, before my dogs, everything. It's got to come first. And so now I have my sobriety on that pedestal. Uh, take you back, maybe when you were younger, you played a game called King of the Hill. You had to fight like hell to get to the top of that hill. But then you had to fight like hell to stay there. Hmm. Same thing. My sobriety is on this pedestal. Uh, alcohol comes knocking. And when it comes knocking, I, I just start shooting, right? I start whipping somebody's ass. I'm not even going to let it get in the door, right? I, I have my sobriety on a pedestal. I got to the top of the hill, and now I've got to fight like hell to stay there. And that's, that's what I want to leave you with today. Whatever you put on your pedestal, 
is, is that's what you'll fight for. Whatever we put in front of our sobriety, by the way, uh, it, we will lose. So if I put my family on that pedestal and I fight for my family, well, I'm not taking care of my sobriety. My, my, my alcoholism will, will rear its ugly head again and I'll end up losing my family, right? So I've got my sobriety on this pedestal and I've got to keep it on this pedestal. And by God, I've got to fight like a motherfucker to protect that sobriety. It just takes one slip, one drink, one moment of weakness. It just takes complacency. Oh, I've got this. I've got this. I, I've now know. I've now learned how to manage my drinking. No, I haven't, and I won't. I won't ever be able to manage my drinking. I know that. That one slip, that one moment of weakness, or that one ounce of complacency, is all it takes for our sobriety to fall off that pedestal. And next thing you know, we're right back into madness. And that's a place for me that I don't ever want to go back to. So I encourage you today: keep keep your sobriety on that pedestal and fight like the devil. Fight like the devil to protect it. Your life just may depend on depend upon it. So just want to leave you with those thoughts today. Uh, if you guys need anything, please feel free to reach out. Uh, today is Wednesday. Wednesdays and Thursdays are always my worst days. So if you can't get a hold of me on the phone, uh, voice anyway, you can always text me. Uh, and I'm usually pretty quick to respond. So love you guys again. Thank you so much for a, a great meeting last night. Um, I got a great topic for tomorrow. And I'm going to try to start doing these back up regularly now Now that I'm, my schedule's kind of settled down. So uh, anyway, love you guys. Just remember, you can't get drunk if you don't take that first drink.